let's build something together discover the life we want to live let's build let's build something together we all have something This is the Long Beach Entrepreneur and Community Builder podcast, and today I have brought on Gina Ruccioni. Ruccioni. <laughs> I should have asked her how she pronounces her name before we got started, uh, but she's here because she's a community builder, and so I wanted everyone to hear her ideas on how we can build community through meal sharing and other types of events, and uh what would you like to share with us today? Thanks, Gina, for having me. Um, I, gosh, um, I s- moved to Long Beach about three years ago. Um, and I think Long Beach has a lot of potential to do some really great things. Um, I originally started out as an investment banker. Uh, and that didn't really... It's so funny. I think when we, when, as we're growing up, we're supposed to do what sounds good. And, and I thought that sounded good. Um, But that wasn't what made me happy at all. And so my passion was food. And as we talked about a little earlier, I was, I was, you know, I went through a series of corporate jobs and then I just thought, you know, I just want to get paid to have dinner parties. But it was a lot more than that. I, I think there's something to be said for people joining together and sitting together, eating together, and that proverbial breaking bread that happens that really disarms people. And I found myself in all of my corporate jobs always talking to all my clients about food like where are we going to go to lunch what did you eat and that that beginning conversation disarms people um at least and then i also am very excited about food and i think i get so excited that it excites other people right i do a lot of meetups so i notice that quite a few of them are revolving around eating drinking wine and getting together as a social experience. Yeah, and I think uh, when I was a, I was working for a tech startup called Meal Sharing uh, all last year, and a lot of it was, you know, how do we get people to come together and, and eat together? Uh, and meal sharing allows for people like that are you know traveling overseas to have a home cooked meal in someone's home. And this is revisiting an old paradigm where people actually sat and ate together. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the majority of my education truly came from sitting around the table talking to my parents, which unfortunately I don't think a lot of people have that experience anymore. Um, But I think there's something to be said about even as an adult sitting around a table and eating together with people that you don't know and learning about them and their stories that's really special. Um, and, and then, so I was like, how do I monetize that? Only because if I just want people to sit and eat together, I also need to pay my rent. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I, right. like, and I, I just thought, well, I guess I could charge no, a nominal fee for this. And then it just, I just kind of spiraled from there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. So do you have any ideas specifically in Long Beach, what you would like to do? So something that I was toying with for the last couple of years was something that I like to call creative collaboration. Um, So it's really funny and fortuitous that I find myself in your space. Um, I really like everything that is art, right? And I say that in, well, back step. I like things that allow people to create. I think we're all capable of being very creative. And somewhere someone told us not to do something creative because that's not what we do to make money. Right. Um, and I think when we put our minds together and do creative things as a, as a group, mm-hmm. there is possibility for not only, even not just bartering, but really like, I'm an artist, I need help doing this, you're a business artist, or you know, whatever, but there's a, there's a, a give and take there. Okay. And something that I find that would be really unique is to actually, of all things, partner with you. Um, because I have a lot of artists that I'm friends with that have talked about doing pop-ups because I'm I'm not a particular artist what I'm great at doing is bringing people together like oh you like to you like to eat and you like to cook let me bring you into this space but while we're in this space I have an artist friend who likes to hang art who would love to showcase their art and then here's a person that well his day job is this but he really enjoys I, I don't know making nut butter or whatever it is right 
and, and you yeah yeah and I, I've created a great space and what I've wanted to do is be the person who opens the doors for other people to come in and bring the event to us so I think it would be really lovely to see a lot a lot more a lot of my friends in Long Beach who are artists and also musicians. What a wonderful thing to have a dinner while there's mu- a live music playing. And then if there's also a component where maybe people are cooking together and then they, so maybe they make the meal together and then there's music in the background. And uh, if you remember, I showed you there's a wall that I said was neutral art for backgrounds if someone right. was doing a... Um, any type of filming but that's the wall that we would take down and put up the artist of the evening on that wall that would be so lovely. we have done that uh, so that's about uh, 14 by 18 feet of wall space that an artist could hang anywhere from you know five nice pieces to salon style would be where you would cover the whole wall right so and then that way we would cross promote the gallery and they would invite their friends and family and you know, it would just be a collaborative type yeah. of event. That sounds lovely. The other thing I've noticed too, especially working in Long Beach, is that there are a lot of, when you think of, a lot of my friends that work in restaurants are obviously in the back of the house, right? They're they're doing the prep work. They're the line cook. They're, but they're, the executive chef runs the show essentially. But there's all these other people underneath him that are carrying the weight of the restaurant that all have passion and all have drive and all want to participate and do something and, and have a moment where they really shine, right? Because there's something about working in a restaurant that's really thankless, right? The person who's working the front of the house, I, like when I worked in a restaurant, I get the tip. I get told how wonderful the food is. And I really, I just brought it to your table. Yes, I'm passionate about food. So if you're at my table, you probably got a little bit more than just me passing you food. But um, there, there's an opportunity for a lot of chefs in Long Beach. And I say that with a lot of admiration because you aren't just an executive chef. If you're working in the back of a house, you are, you are one of many hands that collaborate to bring a dinner shift together. Mm-hmm. And those are the kinds of people when I first moved to Long Beach that I was really trying to help mm-hmm. because I saw myself in them. I wish someone would have reached out and said, Gina, here's an opportunity, take it. And no one did for me. And But that's also because I think my personality lends itself to, I, I look like a go-getter. <laughs> so I don't, and people right. don't really. But there's a lot of, a lot, a lot of chef friends I have here in Long Beach that are really eager to do do things and I and I think this would be a beautiful space that would allow that mm-hmm. Great. Yeah. did you want to talk about uh, any of your other businesses um, anything that you have going on right now yeah so any events that are coming up yeah one thing that I do um, very much in in the spirit of community building um, I currently consult for a members only culinary club in Santa Monica mm-hmm. uh, which is a very very special place that I've yet to see uh, anywhere just quite yet um so i think we're on to something um i'm the culinary director so i'm in charge of producing four events a week um that vary in scale and scope but anywhere from 20 to 150 people and that's all week long and then the next week wash rinse repeat uh but what's really beautiful about stage and table um is it also provides a venue but it's just for food Mm -hmm. so we're not we don't do the music and the art thing there's the capability for that but we really want to focus on food mm-hmm. and it's member driven so what you see in the past were pop-up dinners and you see a lot of that kind of thing and I think you and I both agree that community building is what's important so I don't want to pay a membership to a club like for example the Soho house mm-hmm. that doesn't tug on my heartstrings mm-hmm. that does nothing for me in fact they don't make me feel like i'm a part of something special mm-hmm. that's not my tribe mm-hmm. so what i've noticed at stage and table what i've been able to do and, and the owner has allowed me to create are events where members mm-hmm. contribute they participate they cook together they share meals together like last night we all made pizza together i had 30 people in a room rolling out dough and making pizzas mm-hmm. together there was no i in any of it mm-hmm. and that makes me feel like i'm on the right track with my career in my life because i just want people to come and eat together I've really noticed the benefit of that. We have a yoga class twice a week for my staff and my community services, and everyone would leave after the class. And um, I decided to go ahead and get groceries 
and put them out on our little island in the kitchen. And uh, it's basically good salad foods and fruit and, and something. And we just all make our own salad and sit down and eat together. And that has really brought it all together to yeah. have the yoga and then share a lunch meal together. So. There's a gentleman after offline that I want to connect you with who's mm-hmm. an artist that I met recently that does art installations around food. Um, and he is absolutely fascinating. His name is Christopher Reynolds. Mm-hmm. Um, he would be a very lovely addition to this space. Great. Um, but I'll... Yeah. He, I'm also... Um, it's interesting that you brought up Santa Monica because even though I am focusing on Long Beach, I'm a Long Beach uh, resident, a native of Long Beach, but I really see the benefit in expanding outside and bringing collaborators together. So I really feel connected to Santa Monica area as well. Yeah. And uh, I have meetups that I call Long Beach to Santa Monica. Ah, okay. You know, so um, I really do believe in branching out side of the city and sort of having sister partners with other cities. We've got great collaborators in Minnesota that are traveling back and forth. Some of them live here. Some of them are still in Minnesota. But the great thing about our technology today is you can Skype, you can Zoom meet. Right. And, uh, you can feel just really connected to people anywhere there are. So I am very open to collaborating with uh, people in other areas. I love well. that idea. And bringing them over here. Yes. And we as a group go over to Santa Monica and other areas. Yeah, and that's something interesting too that I've noticed about L.A. Because I, I went to high school for a little while in Italy. Mm-hmm. And everybody knows everybody, right? And I... And it's, well, in, in the city I lived in, it was a small city. Mm-hmm. So there's something really nostalgic I think about when I, I, I when I think about smaller cities where everybody kind of knows each other. Not in the sense where everybody knows everybody's business, mm-hmm. but I notice part of the struggle because we don't have such a really expansive public transportation in LA. Mm-hmm. People are like, oh, I'm in Santa Monica, I'm not going to go to Long Beach, or mm-hmm. vice versa. And I really wish people would get out of that mindset because, mm-hmm. and I don't want to call them little boroughs, but these little areas all around LA these little pockets have really interesting subcultures the food and drink I have in Echo Park when I go to visit my best friend and then or I go to downtown versus Monterey Park or just all these little areas that are so unique and special Mm -hmm. why would you want to not be a part of them why would you not want to experience something that I always found really interesting and I also thought it'd be great to collaborate with a limousine or party bus company or someone Uh, We have Big Red Bus in Long Beach. So there are ways of coordinating the transportation for everybody as well. And uh, also using public transportation. They've had some events where they specifically said on this day, we've got, you know, these buses taking off from downtown Long Beach and they're going to go out to L.A. and experience a festival or event out there. It's funny you say that because I just, oh God, when I was a kid, I took the blue line Mm -hmm. and I just never took it again, right? Mm -hmm. And then I... um, I took the blue line again for the first time recently. I just moved to downtown Long Beach from Belmont Shore. Mm -hmm. And I got on on Pacific and and just took it all the way up to downtown LA. I thought, God, how great is this? Because I'm in my car Mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. And just the interactions that you have with very dynamic people on the blue line even. I just thought, I just, what a fun... Well, when I travel, when I've been to New York, I have been to Paris one time. I've been to places where everyone uses public transportation. And when I'm there, it becomes part of the um, excursion that you're going to. So you're going to go to a museum for the day. Part of the activity is getting on the train and getting there. Sure. And it's really enjoyable. So every time I've come back from a vacation like that, I have actually gotten on the bus in Long Beach and took public transportation to some place because it really is an interesting experience. A hundred percent. Yeah, that's um, funny. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, we um, any last words Gosh. or anything else you want to share? No, I think just thank you so much for having me. Mm-hmm. And w- it's so funny how people's paths yeah. cross. So you're my first guest. T- Today is the two Ginas, <laughs> Gina Woodruff and Gina. Gina Riccioni. Thank you for joining me. I really appreciate it. I'm excited about our possibilities for collaborating together. Me too. Thanks, Gina. Thank you. Let's build something together. Discover the life we want to live. Let's build, let's build something together. 
all have something 